you're the way your pictures are set up behind you it looks like um you're in the oval office <laughs> really do i look yeah because they always got pictures of their family behind them <laughs> do i look presidential you do yeah yeah mm -hmm. nice. hi i hope y'all were following that conversation because <laughs> that's the get it of the show <laughs> Woohoo! i'm president angie hambrick the associate vice president of diversity justice and sustainability and the director for the center for gender equity I don't know why I always forget my title, like why I always have to kind of look up and remember, you are frozen solid. <laughs> you froze for me too. You Did I? Froze, we asked, yeah, we asked our own. Yeah, yeah. It says my internet is unstable. Oh, are you, we probably you, should restart over. We're uh, back. All right. Yeah, we're unfrozen. Who, who are you? Me? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't know who I am anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so out of it. I am uh, Jennifer Smith, Jen Smith. I'm Dean of Inclusive Excellence at PLU and um, Associate Professor of Gender, Sexuality, and Race Studies as well. <sighs> that's who I am. That's who, that's, yeah. yeah. Oh, how you, how you been doing? What you been up to? Oh, what have I been doing? Well, um, I think. How was your hike? Yeah. I'm, do what? How was your hike? Oh, um, the hike. Uh, it was good. Yeah. So I went hiking this past weekend with a, a partner and uh, we did about a little over, let's see, eight, nine, five. That's what? How many miles is that? 17, 20, about 25 miles. Um, I'm part of the Wonderland on the north side of Rainier. And we didn't see a bear this time, but we did see some marmot, uh, frogs. So it was nice. Yeah. It was nice to get away from emails. Um, what about you? What you been doing? I have, and I say this probably every other call or every other video because that's my life, but I've been writing. Like, I, actually, my whole dissertation has been approved. And so now I just have to, yeah, I have to go back and like do like edits and transitions and things like that. And then send Woo! it to the chair. The, the by the end of the week and then work on like the table of contents and the abstract and it. so Woo! you're yeah. almost done i'm almost done mm -hmm. it's a doctor so <laughs> <I'm just saying. laughs> i'm also in this process have been like i've been like playing around with wine so every night when i write i write between like 8 and 10 30 is like working for me lately because i drink and so i've okay. been i've been drinking rieslings Okay, with ice cubes in them? <laughs> no, but I did put it in the freezer. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, nice. Um, mm -hmm. It gives me just enough buzz to like make my, my, my fingers nimble to type and mm -hmm. my brain nimble and still smart enough to think. So nice. I'm yep. feeling it. I'm feeling that's it. good. Yeah. Oh my God, that's so amazing. Yeah, I, when I um, defended my dissertation, it was a ten. It was at ten a.m. Um, and I was so nervous and just on edge. I had. I was actually a glass of riesling. Um, See? about nine fifteen ish. Finished that sucker off before I defend it, and it was necessary because I. I don't think I could have calmed down enough to sound like you were saying intelligent enough to know what I'm talking about, except loose enough to get it out. So, yeah, that's a fine tradition. Yeah, you might Woo! see during my. If y'all didn't know, Jennifer is on my committee, so you just might. Uh, well, I mean, you never know. You don't know what's in my Tumblr, so. <laughs> I know what's in your Tumblr. <laughs> we don't drink it out of my Dolly Parton coffee cup that you bought me from Dollywood. Nice. Yep. There you go. Like the, the cup says, I will always love you. Yeah. Dolly. Yeah. <laughs> <Speaking of> love. <laughs> oh, nice transition. Ooh, Every now and then. Our topic this week is, is thinking about joy and in particular thinking about, about black joy and black hope and black people and um not too long ago i guess a couple months ago the diversity center alumni group um put together three different um talking groups so there was a group for white folks who wanted to talk a little bit more about what does it mean to be white in this movement um, what does whiteness mean? How can ally be an active thing? How can you be an accomplice and activist? Um, there was a group for non-black people of color to talk about anti-blackness in, in those communities. Um, and then there was a black people group. 
And we were really intentional in our Black people group to acknowledge kind of what is happening <laughs> in our world and anti-Blackness and, and the killing of Black bodies. But so that was always present in the space. But we were also really intentional just to create a space of joy and to talk about um, Black joy um, and what it means to be hopeful, still in the struggle, but hopeful and kind of what gives us happiness and joy and what fulfills us and how can, um, going back to last week, how can taking a nap be resistance and how can taking care of yourself be um, a revolutionary act and those sorts of things. And so um, I was really grateful for that space that I was, for me personally, that I was able to come into a space where it was okay to acknowledge the moment but not talk about it Mm -hmm. And instead, talk about what what makes me happy, yeah. um, and how the 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 moment and the revolution can make me happy. But what also makes me happy is drinking a twenty four ounce uh, can of peanut butter porter because it's delicious. And, and don't poo poo my joy. Like I did, I, I say if that brings you joy, that is that's amazing and. My little face aside, shouldn't I shouldn't impact your joy? But maybe that's my role as a white woman is to you see that? affirm your joy. Yeah, but you see the celebrate your peanut butter porter. The first reaction of whiteness is always to say, Psh, that their imaginations are so narrow when it comes to joy." Read my dissertation that they don't even know <laughs> what to do with our joy. You know what? You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so like, <laughs> <laughs> so so why? And, and I, we also thinking about how um, seeing black bodies um, and, and repeatedly, and I think we talked about this a little while ago, but our fascination with seeing black bodies and, and pain yeah. um, and dead and, and harmed. And, and when we, um, especially white folks are asking black people like, what should I be reading? It's always something that has to do with like killing of the black body. Yeah. So, what is that about? Like, why, what is the resistance to thinking about Black folks in a different way other than just the harm that happens to our bodies? Whew, that's a big question. You're um, an associate uh, professor of GSRS, so let me see what you got. Titles, titles. Uh, what, what, what do I got? It, no, it's such a, because when, when uh, we, we start exploring this topic for this week, one of the things I thought about um, was representation in popular culture. And this question was brought, has been brought up and, and, and talked about a lot in sort of, you know, one of the areas I studied early on, which is trans studies. And it was a similar question in that why are the majority of representation of trans individuals in popular culture stories of victimization? Even if it's a victimization and triumph, it's, it's, it's almost always about those bodies being harmed um, in a particular way. And, and, you know, I'm thinking about your question around black bodies and what that is. I mean, there's questions around the audience and I, you know, is it, is it a matter of trying to convince white audiences that, um, you know, black people have been, in, have, have been enslaved um, or to, to take that historical trauma seriously? And if that's the case, why, um, one, why do we still have to keep telling those stories in order to convince people of historical facts? Um, and secondly, what does that, what does that indicate in terms of how white individuals are being taught to see black uh, individuals? And, and, and I think, unfortunately, it's often as solely black bodies that are sites of harm and violence and not as complete human beings. And so, while the intent, I think, of some of these representations may um, what does a black experience and in some ways the the um, experiences of the black body, um, how do they how 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 can they be celebrated as sites of joy and pleasure and happiness and creativity and not solely as sites of harm? So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess a question that I, I, I'm interested to hear um, from you is, you know, what's, 
what what's that what's that balance there where it's holding you know in light of again black bodies being gunned down by the police and you know and black humans being gunned down by the police excuse me and representations of joy and pleasure and 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 all of that what's yeah. the i mean is there a, i mean balance may not even be the right word um yeah i i don't know i i don't have like an an eloquent well eloquent answer to that um I've been thinking a lot about um, I've been thinking a lot about the black imagination and how again it's my dissertation, but y'all y'all can just hear. Um, I've been thinking a lot about how whiteness, how blackness shows up, <laughs> how blackness shows up in the white imagination is very narrow and it's it's one sided and it's, oh. it's really about. Um, how black bodies can be some sort of asset to whiteness and white people. So either kind of a mm -hmm. positive asset as black bodies are usually used um, when white folks want to come into their consciousness, mm -hmm. uh, their whiteness. Mm -hmm. So kind of this positive orientation, but also of course the, the historical and the contemporary um, orientation of um, whiteness being the controllers of cultural, economic, social, assets that because they black people um because they need black people in order to, to kind of build this this hierarchy in this juxtaposition and so i've been thinking a lot about the, the how we show up in the white imagination but then there's also this other thing where black people my, me as a black person I, i've never needed whiteness to understand my blackness and i've never had the same relationship to whiteness as white people have had to blackness um and so my perception of what it means to be black lives outside of the lines of what white people have for me in their imagination and so i think for me it is continuing to strengthen my imagination of myself of blackness mm -hmm. in my own imagination outside of of the the box that whiteness has has created for me and so that can be you know um raising my my son sanko who i also always talk about raising sanko with a, a strong sense of self um mm -hmm. showing him representations of himself that are outside of whiteness and the white imagination so i talk a lot about um talk a lot about his love for the spideyverse movie and miles oh Boy. yeah because Miles Morales has hair like his and skin like his, and so <laughs> helping him, helping him create a, a, a blackness in his own imagination that is so rich and so full and so beautiful and so colorful that whatever whiteness has for him, he d that doesn't dictate how he sees <laughs> himself. Yeah. Um, and so it's it's hard because you know whiteness is everywhere. It's it's the buds, it's the soup, it's the jello, it's all those things um, that we can't help avoid because it just yeah. is. Um, but how can I strengthen my own imagination to have a greater vision of myself? So. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's giving me like a shit ton. That's a technical term to think about. Um, in terms of imagination and and again you know i think as you're saying in my reaction to uh, peanut butter porter um maybe a, a lack of imagination or a lack of a, a dynamic imagination that that um in some ways whiteness requires to maintain itself um and of course i went to james baldwin um because i know he's got lots of smart things to say about this and one of them so he, he is so good oh, so good um and this is from the fire next time and what made me think of it is there you know he's talking about how white people don't even really know how to enjoy bread anymore um so i'm going to quote this just because it's so good and he's talking about the idea of being sensual and when he's talking about sensual it's not like sensual as in like it's like or like the erotic 
from Andrea Lord is like sensual in terms of being in your body. And he's talking about how white people have cut themselves off from their body, um, which I think is linked to this, this idea of imagination that you're talking about. And so he says, um, and I quote, to be sensual, I think, is to respect and rejoice in the force of life of life itself and to be present in all that one does from the effort of loving to the breaking of bread. Uh, it will be a great day for America, incidentally, when we begin to eat bread again. Blasphemous and okay, he's right, right behind the store and the package is crap either. Something very sinister happens to the people of a country when they begin to distrust their own reactions as deeply as they do here and become as joyless as they have become. Um, and of course he's talking about white people and their lack of, their, their general joylessness. And I think if you see the anger with which, how some people, some white people interact with the world, they are genuinely joyless. Um, and um, because they're not fully human and or because they wanna maintain boundaries around themselves and others. Um, yeah. You mentioned, uh, oh, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to ask, like, how would you define black joy? What brings you joy? Well, that kind of leads into my question. You mentioned, oh. or you mentioned earlier things about representation and the media. And so mm -hmm. my question to you, and I'll answer it too, because this is one <laughs> of the places that brings me joy, <laughs> is um, what is your favorite black movie? Because I think that um, one of the ways that I find joy is, is through representation, seeing, my, seeing myself in different forms of media joyfully, mm -hmm. or at least represented. Um, and so, what's your favorite? I love the Girls Trip. I just love it. It's so funny. Like, it's so... Oh, I just love it. There are so many things about it. Like, I mean, Tiffany Hatch's character is just everything um the scene where they're tripping in the club is it just gives me life the if you've not seen it the grapefruit scene all of it it's just and it's it's great and it's and it's you know it's four black women just having fun with each other and trying to navigate their life um and take and they're i feel like they're taken seriously as characters and complete humans in in the picture and it's it's funny. Uh, it, it's funny without them being caricatures, which in terms of other representations of, of, um, of uh, Black folks, um, that it can be problematic. So I love it. I love Girls Trip. So yeah. <laughs> what about you? What's your favorite Black movie? Oh, it's so hard because one of my favorite Black movies is this movie called Uptown Saturday Night. And it stars Sidney Poitier and Bill Cosby. Okay. And I know, I know, Bill Cosby, all kinds of the things, all the things, all the yeah. things. I absolutely understand. But this movie is from like the 70s. It's about these two characters who um, go to this, this underground nightclub and gamble and they lost their um, uh, lottery ticket. And the next day they found that the lottery ticket hit. And so now they have to go through... <laughs> Um, <laughs> the underbellies of New York to find the damn lottery ticket. And oh. so there's all these different really famous Black people in it. Um, like Harry Belafonte is in it. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Pryor is in it. Like um, Flip Wilson is in it. It is such a good movie, a fun Black classic movie um, that I, I watch, used to watch all the time growing up. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Still have it on VHS. <laughs> Look, that Look that up. Can you, do you have a VCR? Yeah, I have a VCR. Okay. I'm, yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> huh. I love Coming to America too, which is, they're doing a sequel, aren't they, to Coming to America? Yeah, they've been doing that for like the past okay. 15 years. So, okay. who knows? Black Panther was one that we were those people oh. black when we went to see black panther in the theater jonathan adams fried chicken and made cornbread and there was <laughs> and also macaroni and cheese so we were those people in your in your theater having a, a doggone black people picnic we did it we did it was a little much as i was sitting there eating macaroni and cheese i'm like this is a lot but i ate it yeah ate it. yeah so like yeah it was very joyful. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, you got to find it. Um, it's not going to come. I feel like it's not going to come to you. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, we need joy. We do. Yeah. 
All right, maybe that brings us to our final segment, which is um, honorable and dishonorable mentions. Let's start with a dishonorable um, and share those first and maybe end on a high note. So what's your dishonorable mention uh, this week, Angie? It is allergy season. Um, it has just started to kind of warm up and really be summer in the Pacific Northwest. And so my allergies have been acting up and, be, and I know better, but all allergy symptoms are COVID symptoms. And so, <laughs> Allergies be trying to play me, and I have a, a runny nose and an itchy throat and a and, um, headache. And I'm like, oh, girl, you got, you got the COVID, the COVID. Girl, you got the COVID. I don't. I have allergies, and by the midday, they're gone. But every day, almost every day, I'd be like, oh, is this it? Do I got the COVID? Do I need to isolate? Put on my mask, which I do anyway. Wear your mask, people. <laughs> Um, so allergies can get the middle finger. They they are tripping right now. It is not helpful in time of COVID. <laughs> what about you? Um, mine is also summer related, and mine is uh, mosquitoes. They can also get the middle finger because they were biting me a lot when I was out in the woods, and I had a you know sports bra on, and those shits were biting me through my shirt. And so when I took my shirt off, I had on like on my back, you know, like the you know like a you know running bra has like the little T in the back. I had two big patches of circles on my back of mosquito bites. That is not what I thought you were gonna say. So <laughs> I thought you were gonna talk about the front of your sports bra and not the back. You you kept it PG. I appreciate yeah, that. They didn't make it through the sports bra. They made it through the shirt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, honorable mention. What are you going to shout out to? I want to give a shout out to our first ever Decent Alumni Wellness Week that we had last week, um, hosted by Simone, Tyler, Jonathan, Simone, Tyler, Jonathan, Nicole, and Princess. So it was a week of virtual activities that helped us connect to each other, our mind, body, and our spirit. Um, it was a great time to find, again, joy with each other and among each other and a, a really good time for rest and reflection and, and those sorts of things. So I'm really appreciative that we still find ways to be in community with each other because we know how important that is um, during this time and any time really to be with your people. Um, so shout out to the organizers of that. It was really a dope week. What about you? Nice. Awesome. You know, mine was going to be the sun again, but it's not out. So I guess I'm going to give it the middle, middle finger. Right now it's cloudy, um, but maybe it'll come out later. Um, so yeah, in lieu of the sun um, and honorable mentions, um, I will give you an honorable mention for finishing the first draft of your dissertation, Woo! which is huge. That is so huge. Uh, which is harder, birthing Sanko or this dissertation? The dissertation. Okay. Sanko felt like it wasn't easy, but I had drugs. So <laughs> it he just kind of came out. Uh, Eventually. His head was sitting there for a while, though. I'm just saying. It was sitting there for a while. Um, but that was way easier than this. Did you read it? Because I sent it to you. I just got off the trail on Monday. I have not read it yet. Hmm. Okay. You see that? <laughs> That's what the court <laughs> You're dragging me today. That's all right. <laughs> it brings me joy. Okay. I'll take joy. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, as we close out, I just want to, before Angie closes out, I'm sorry for my internet was kind of wonky today, friends. So um, hopefully we didn't stop uh, too much. I know our producer, Thomas Two Names, <laughs> texted me and was like, turn off your damn phone. My phone is off, Thomas. I'm sorry. So, yeah. Yeah, Thomas Two Names just has a lot of two um, lately because he's out fighting forest fires and shit like that. And so, you know, he's, he's got a lot of things to say. But shout out to you, Thomas Two Names, for continuing to produce this podcast even or video, <laughs> even though you're, you're fighting forest fires. And shout out to our friends over in Marketing Communication for keeping this channel up and active. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's dope. The whole channel is dope. Check out the entire. Uh, PLU, U, PLU community YouTube channel. There's some really, really great content there. So we're the best, but there's some other good stuff out there too as well. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We will yep. see you. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wash your hands. We'll see you YBs next week.